69th episode and man what an episode 169. to be 169 i'm the action-packed travis snail i am the transparent tyler briggs i am the rhombus dylan muss yes ladies and gentlemen actually our nicknames have no idea they don't match with mine we're talking about the rhombus yeah rhombus huh? is my favorite shape yeah, yeah, I you, I, you thought Boom. that one out you thought that one out so <laughs> we are reviewing for this week's episode, Shape of Water. The rhombus has a lot of heart. And I don't think it gets nearly the credit. Does. But anyway, go now, on. Now, this is a bit later, you would probably think, but that's just because Kelowna sucks. It just came in the theater recently. So for us, it's all new and whatnot. And, you know, there's actually not too much news right now to break down. We've exactly. got a lot of stuff yeah. coming up next week. So that's why I'm going to cheap plug. Next Monday, Geek First is going to be super early. It's going to be on a Monday because we're doing a podcast for Geek First after Super Bowl. There's rumors that there's going to be a new Black Panther trailer, an Infinity War trailer. I don't believe all those, but we're first again a Mission Impossible trailer. Incredibles. Monday, maybe. there is a rumor about that. Monday, there's a rumor that we're getting the solo trailer finally for Good Morning America. Nice. So Monday night could be a packed up. We got, I haven't talked about Ant-Man. So right. We're going to be on it like a bonnet. So yeah, Monday, we're going to be a little bit early. Check out Thor Retrospective. That just came out. Mm-hmm. And then big time tomorrow, the Geek First Gauntlet back. Season two, it started off with Champion v. Champion. Tyler, you've chosen Taylor Field as your, your partner. How do you feel about that? Oh, wow. Colton. Oh, he's oh, starstruck. <laughs> Taylor Field. I honestly... I, I don't know. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of work. Wow. One way or the other, so... I just had to fill a spot. And he seemed like the right person to do it. Okay, well, and my part is, you're going to have to wait till tomorrow. I'm not... You don't have to watch... Uh, I need to say the Wolf Order is going to take over the entire world, and you want you want to be you don't want to miss it, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what else you don't want to miss? Our review Shape of Water that we're doing right now. Exactly. You <laughs> should be doing. Non- Eventually, we get to it. You should yeah. be doing non spoilers beginning, which I think we will. But I don't have like I don't I don't. There's not too many instances we're going to jump into spoilers, but we'll do non spoilers first, sure. and maybe we'll talk about. It, and then if there's spoilers, we can say okay, we're going to talk about spoilers. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, who wants to talk about the Shape of Water? It's very hard to say that it has a shape. It's a very uh, malleable fluid. Malleable it's a, fluid. It's a fluid. So I think it's supposed it's to be the sh- of I think they're supposed to be like it's the shape, the shape in the water. So it's like the shape that's in the, the water. Yeah. Right, right, right. Like a sponge. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. I can I can talk about that yeah. a little bit more. Um, hmm. The first thought I had when I uh, watched this film in the intro. The intro is beautiful, by the way. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is. Bioshock. Reminds me a lot of it. Uh, Rapture and all that good stuff. So. And then you were really surprised when it was not the Bioshock movie. It's a shame He actually water. walked out of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched it alone. Yeah, so. no, I, that's all I have for the film. So. <laughs> 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 this is Bioshock. It's not. That's your review. Of game. For all the people that yeah, only listen to our podcast for like, gaming and geek news, well, I guess not you, could, you could talk about the trailers then that you saw. <laughs> They looked like they were good, so yeah, like Peter Jackson. Jackson is, but uh, yeah, no, I uh, I love the opening. The cinematography throughout the film was phenomenal. Um, acting was wonderful. I think Michael Shannon did a. I would say he had the the strongest performance in the film, uh, and yeah, it's uh, a lot of complex, different kind of plots going on. There's a lot more going on than I was expecting there to be. Fair enough. And um, things got moving very quickly compared to what I expected. But overall, I'd say it was a good film. A uh, solid ride. Yeah, yeah Michael Shannon got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Oh, yeah, it was Best Supporting Actor. He did get nominated? Yeah. And so did... Mm-hmm. Uh, Sally Hawkins. And yes, Yermo. but so did her, I mean, her friend, her friend, her co-worker in the movie. Octavia. That character did as well, yeah. I believe. I did a podcast. They got they pretty much got a nomination for almost every single category. They almost broke the record. They almost tied the record with uh, um, uh, 
all about Eve, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and La La Land. They mm -hmm. hold the record with, I think, 14, and then the really? Shibar got 13. So it got. Ooh. How many is there? Um, you could I get, guess you wouldn't be able to apply for all of them at the same time, though, right? I I think with Lord of the Rings you could have because they got no acting nominations whatsoever for Lord oh, of the Rings. Really? So I still think Vigo wow. for Aragorn could have got one. <clears throat> I think Sandy Circus could have got one, but interesting. No, Michael hmm. Shannon is not nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Really? Yeah, wow. but she is. Yeah, Dylan's right snubbed. about that. But yeah, he did get snubbed. It, that supporting actor race was so. quite big. Probably because he's quite vulgar. Really he scared strong them. Strong performance. He scared them. He scared them. He scared me a little bit, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very uh, vulgar film. I can go next, I guess. I say. Yeah, for me, uh, this... I, I think uh, I agree with you that Michael Shannon's character... Do we know the character name? That would be great, wouldn't it? His name is Richard. No, it's His not Richard. Name That's is the neighbor. Denson. Nope. His name is... Patrick? Denny. Oscar? Danny. <laughs> Danny? It could be Danny. No, Denny. Denny. Two's a party, three's a crime. Um, anyway, Michael Shannon's character. Yes, he's he's in this movie more than I was expecting, I guess. Seen in the trailers a couple of times. And, uh, yeah, because he was... I feel like he almost had as much screen time as uh, mm -hmm. your main character, Eliza, it felt like. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, to me, uh, yeah, she was a, she really stood out. Obviously, she's the star. His name was Richard. I knew it! <laughs> Michael Shannon's? Yeah. No, it wasn't Richard. Richard the, Stricton or Rich, something. Rich, Stricter. Strickland, Wasn't yeah. Richard the neighbor guy? No, it's, that's his that's name's real name. name. Yeah, Richard Stricton. Yeah. I, I, had a, I had a creeping suspicion there was two Richards. Wow, creeping um, suspicion. I, yes, I guess so. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, uh, Sally Hawkins as Eliza. I thought uh, that character, obviously it's a, it's a character who doesn't speak. And I think they went about that in a really good way in a combination with her acting and be able to portray certain uh, feelings and emotions without using her words directly, but also in the way, uh, I, I think it just in the way is directed uh, because the, her two, she has two like friends in this movie, right? Her neighbor and her coworker. And um, there's lots of different scenes and sometimes they'll have the subtitles to say what she's saying. Sometimes they'll have one of those two characters Kind of repeating what she's saying or describing or reacting to it or sometimes uh it's i don't know it, she's not really saying anything i guess but it's just through her acting i thought <clears throat> that dynamic between those three was really interesting because those two characters those two side characters i think could often in many other movies just kind of be forgotten or just kind of satisfactory away. what's that drift away i don't know the reference it's on the water yeah it's Oh, I thought I got like, it, but I wasn't. I wasn't impressed. <laughs> I thought that was like a, a movie that I haven't seen or something. But yes, I think they really could have drifted away. But instead, uh, it was. It felt like every scene that they had was really purposeful in uh, establishing the main character, as well as them having their own kind of storylines that I found myself interested in, uh, even though I was kind of uh, not not expecting them to be in it quite as much as as they were. And uh, yeah, the movie was. Uh, it was quite mysterious, obviously, with the main character as well, but mystery throughout, and I think it had solid pacing. I really liked the music and, yeah, the visuals, a lot of, like, color choices that were, you know, really prominent throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and just really good acting all around. There's a couple of characters uh, I'm not as sold on, but overall, I, I, I quite enjoyed it, and I found that I was uh, involved, I was sucked in the whole time, yeah. so... Yeah, this movie I started anticipating once I saw the trailer, I saw the cast. I'm a fan of Guillermo del Toro, so I can't say I'm a big fan because like, I love Pan's Labyrinth. I really like Crimson Peak that came out a few years ago. But mm. stuff like the Hellboy movies have never really done it for me. Did not like Pacific Rim. So that's why I can say like the stuff that he does that I like, I really enjoy it. And then other stuff, I don't think his other stuff is bad. It's just stuff that I don't enjoy. So for me, I'm a fan of his. I'm always interested to see because he's an interesting guy, interesting director. This is definitely an interesting movie. It's definitely a weird movie mm -hmm. in the same way it's a beautiful movie. I think these two touched upon already. Visually, it is stunning. It looks, there's many shots of, it kind of feels like painting the sculpts, especially, I won't say what it is, but like the ending of the movie, there's many shots of this movie that you could freeze frame and it could be an image somewhere in like an all art gallery. You know, like yeah. every mm -hmm. single thing, even the like laboratory or wherever the monster is held, like all of it is like, even though it's like dim and grimly lit, it, it has so much character to it. All the locations in his movies always have lots of character to it. Um, the actual characters, I love Michael Shannon. He's like the most like sleaziest he could probably get in this movie. <coughs> he's just such a 
terrible person and it's just like nothing like sometimes villains don't have anything redeemable about them and they can kind of come up with one note he does that very well where it's not one note you know like he doesn't really have anything redeemable about him he's just kind of a piece of shit guy yeah. who wants to like mess with this monster and you know make he wants to push himself forward in his job but really that's not a good enough excuse for the things he does in this movie the main cast is great i think uh sally hawkins does a good job for I, like obviously she's not only for best actress so it's not like a, oh she doesn't get the credit she deserves but I still don't think she does because she doesn't talk in this movie and that is really hard to pull off a performance that feels powerful and you can feel like she loves this you know this creature but it doesn't feel cheesy and it feels earned um, it's a very subtle movie it's a very central movie yeah people have heard about yeah they have she has sex with a fish man but you know what like it's done in really creative ways that I mm -hmm. didn't think was gonna happen things that took me off guard the only thing it's not even a negative the only reason why I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought but I knew this going in and it's not necessarily a bad thing because it made the story good for me I was never um, I was never worried where we were going I kind of always felt that when I sat down for the movie I don't wait to the spoilers portion I was gonna be like, okay if I have to tell you what's gonna happen in this movie it's gonna be A, B, C, and D and those things all kind of happen you know it is a little tropey I don't think it's a bad thing because sometimes the best way for a story to be told is the best way. You don't want to make it unpredictable for the sake of like, oh, yeah. like shock value, right? I hate that. That's some of the things with my negatives against Game of Thrones. Sometimes I go, oh, well, yeah, that was a big moment, but did we do it just to be a big moment? You know, so I, I don't, I wouldn't put that as a knock against the film for me. That wouldn't go against my overall score, but that's why I made it something that I didn't like walk up being, wow, I loved it, but I really enjoyed it. And I think it's a great movie. It's definitely one of my favorite out of the contenders this year because I'm not a big fan of the other ones. So I, I really like this one. So, and, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but uh, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Shape of Water. I would I would drift back mm -hmm. into the theater to see it. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna use drift many times in this podcast. We'll just try to use all the water water puns you possibly can. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna float to the top. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, let's whirlpool into the next discussion. <laughs> what do we want to talk about? Do we want to jump into spoilers, or is there stuff anyone can talk about without spoiling? Anything? Uh well, I don't know. I feel like. It sounds like we'd all kind of recommend to go check this movie oh, out. Oh, yeah, 100%. We'll definitely go yeah. maybe watch it before listening to the review spoiler section, at least. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. if it isn't uh, the most unpredictable. Yeah, I would say if you're not, like, a big romantic fan, like, if you're not in that type of stuff, I don't think you'd need to see it in theaters, I think. Like, not even a big romantic fan, but, like, it is visually stunning, but I could... This is a movie that Honestly, I, I think there's enough going on, like, outside of that. Just between, like, the other characters and interactions. True. Maybe. I just, I, I guess that's where I would recommend it from if you like what we like. And if we're recommending it to you, then go see it. But I, this is not a movie I would recommend for everybody. I think it's kind of yeah. a weird movie. Yeah, I think it's paced well, but there's times where it is a lot of just slow character building stuff, mm -hmm. which I like, but other people might not. It's not for me where I think... That's fair. Where, like, sorry, but with, like, La La Land... Like, that one I could throw at anybody because I feel like it has a deeper meaning, but it's also super mainstream, where I feel Shape yeah. of Water is a little kind of weird sci-fi that someone might, yeah. like, watch the first half an hour and be like, eh, like, I don't want to see this fish It's true. be with this lady. I mean, but I, <laughs> I guess considering that it's also has a bunch of Oscar nominations, it sounds like most people like it. People will see it, people yeah. Seem, people seem to like it, yeah. so. Yeah. so. But they nominate some weird stuff sometimes, you know? Some stuff That's that maybe should good. be nominated, you know? Or some stuff that maybe should. up that movie that you constantly bring up? Oh, call me by your name. Fuck off. Thank you for all the YouTube views on that. I'm almost at a thousand. Thank you. But it's one of our most disliked videos of all time. Nice. People hate that I hate that movie. I don't hate it. It's just not a good movie. They know it's a good movie. <laughs> Shape of Water. We're going to talk about the spoiler section. What I want to bring up, because for me, when I did watch it, I thought, okay, we're going to do this thing where you meet the lonely girl, she meets the monster, she breaks the monster out, they chase after this monster, and they get away together. That was exactly how I thought yeah. it was going to go. And that's very, very minimum. I think what Dylan brought up, the things that make me like the movie is the neighbor, is her friend. But that's why the overall right. plot for me, I was never like, where I think, are we going next? I, I think for me, uh, why I would disagree with that is because I was surprised at how much the side characters were used. Okay. And how, because I, I think they were integral to that character and understanding how she feels and, and I guess just developing her and like understanding her without her having to speak. And I, I don't know, I think they did that without it, uh, just being like tacked on there like it really seemed like they put the care to those characters and they gave them like storylines of their own and then yeah like the villain he's in this movie a lot right I, like a, a lot bit, I would yeah. almost say he got the most screen time I, I think not like because it. I think Maybe near the end he disappears a little when they and not is it not a con but when 
the monster is in the apartment because it's yeah, more about them fair. bonding. I think yeah. for he does go away and that boss just gives that talk of like, oh, you gotta figure this out. Yeah. And then he's like gone for a while and he's like, I'm figuring it out. And he's just breaking down doors and there's that great scene where he intimidates like that guy's yeah. husband into telling oh him and you God, hate God. you hate that husband in that moment and he's like, man, you need to divorce this guy. But like, he's great at fucking Bruce, dude. <laughs> he's the yeah. But yeah, I think I think he's. I don't know if he's the most, but I think he's equal to a lot of the other people. Mm-hmm. Then maybe, maybe Silent Hawkins because she's she, she's in a lot of scenes that he's in as well, right? Like yeah. she's sitting there just listening, but she's technically technically there, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's yeah. still acting. Yeah. She's still yeah, yeah, yeah. There's still a camera right on her face. Some people would just sit there motionless, but she, you know, yeah, is lively. Yeah, they sit drunk. there like they're they drowned. <laughs> like they're drowned. Like they drowned. Oh. Wow. I guess I wasn't expecting you to go into this, like, pun <laughs> no. Because that's not something you normally do. But it just happened, you know? <laughs> it just happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to shout out, because I didn't show them non-spoilers, but I really like, uh, now I forgot his actual name, Richard Jenkins, who played, like, her roommate or whatever as the friend. <laughs> I liked his arc, potentially, of the beginning. He clearly did not want to help at all. And then he starts to see some things, he realizes it's her friend. And I love that scene at the diner. Where he's talking to that guy, who oh, he kind of yeah. makes it like a cool guy, and then that guy like kicks out. Is is it a uh, African American? Yes. he kicks yeah, out. Yeah, family. I couldn't remember. Or he or kicks couple, him out. Yeah. yeah, and then he's like, "Well, what?" Like he just has a speech like, "Why are you doing like why?" Are you? And then he just like the guy suddenly just like, "Yeah, I don't think you should come back here anymore." And then in that moment, he gets it of like, "Oh, you know, like the same thing is happening with her with this creature to a much yeah. higher extent because <laughs> this creature is you know maybe you know kind of Time break, gonna die. yeah and breaking some laws along the way, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I really Well, like he, al- he also gets, I, I guess, pushed into that decision because of... I don't really understand the whole situation, actually, where he's, like, bringing in that art to that place that he used to work at, perhaps, to sell... It's really skimmed over quick. Like, there, there's, like, two scenes on it, so I'm not... Yeah. I, the gist of it is that, that I got, at least, was that he used to work there, and now he's bringing in art for them to sell. Yeah. I don't know what kind of mm-hmm. company it is. Yeah. But that that also uh, le- leads to... Mm-hmm. Him making his decision decision to kind of go out on a limb Things and, and trust her like, fully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor guy. And I, I think yeah, they do a really good job. Like uh, Briggs mentioned this after the movie, but like how full his his studio, his room is. Mm-hmm. Like there's constant like art, and it's changing depending on like yeah, almost, when he after he meets the uh, the Aqua Man. He oh, there's, the there's he's actually called the amphibious man in the credits. Amphibious, Amphi- okay. amphibious or amphibian? Amphibians. Amphibious. With an S, I feel like it's amphibian. It might be amphibian. It's that word. That makes more sense to me. I mean, it's taking the same word, just different. Um, Try to say that with a mouthful of water. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> super cool. Oh no. I was going to take a sip of water, but I have something more to say. Yeah, yeah. so the art that he's working on is, is constantly changing, but uh, one thing I really like, the subtle thing, is that he has this picture, this painting that he's working on. It's just like a half-finished face uh, of a girl, mm-hmm. and I think that's it's just a, a cool detail because it kind of tells you about him and how he obviously doesn't have a, uh, any sort of companion, and I think that's just like something that's really interesting that they told just by having it like a picture in the background. I think it's really telling of his character as well. So, yeah, there's there's clearly a lot of care put into these worlds and, like, I guess the set, the sets that these characters are oh, in, yeah. the places they live in. Mm-hmm. So I really like that detail, and I like cats as well, so I think it's cool that he had various cats. You know, he's kind of like the crazy cat man. I don't like cats, nice, so whatever happened nice to that one, I was fine with. I'm that one cat no yeah. animal got cruelty. destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Didn't right. go well for that one. Yeah. And then they have like two. Now I'm adding like like every single thing you say to see if there's like <laughs> some sort of water reference. Yeah, there might be, there might not. You know, you just might have to drop an anchor and find out. Who knows? It's not even. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted that one too. I had it later. I was going to say, oh, you should, instead of speeding by on your boat, you should drop an anchor and subscribe to geekwispodcast.com. So there you go. We can edit that. There you go. We plugged it in right now. It in. I put, yeah, it's right now. I, and I like the little powers that go throughout the movie with him and his hair. You mm-hmm. know, like the beast touches his arm, his hair, and that was a good way. And at first I thought they were going to spin it that he maybe liked her at the very beginning when I first saw the movie. Not, not like a creepy, like this is going to go poorly. I just thought that maybe he had a crush on her. But I thought he was. Uh, she was his assistant at first. Yeah, yeah. but I wasn't sure of the relationship because they were just... I thought he might have a crush, but then they're openly talking about, like, he's like, oh, if I was younger, I'd have so much more sex and all this. And I was like, well, that's, like, I don't really talk about that with, like, you know, just someone I know at work or, like, a yeah, friend. Yeah. Like, 
Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's why that's it kept throwing me off. But then it was just kind of like, okay, he's just her friend and he's yeah. helping her out. And I, I like the other friend. I don't know if like she deserved an Academy Award. No, I don't know if I yeah. I don't think so either. <laughs> I think it's a really mm-hmm. solid performance. But I just think because the character. She she's really good at being her friend. She's really good at reacting to the like, oh, he has what, and like, you know. And then that scene that she is with her husband and Richard is like the most powerful scene. But I think there's not enough for me to be like, oh, that's one of the best performances of the year as far as supporting. Yeah. But I think yeah. she's really solid. So I can't say like you can't really deserve it. It's not somewhere I like. Hey, if you nominate Jared Leto for best, I'd be like, okay, wait a second. But her, I'm like, okay, fair enough. If you if, if the other people thought it was that strong, but. I liked her. She was a good backbone. I think she disappeared <coughs> sometimes, yeah, too. Yeah, but she's definitely essential to a lot of the laboratory scenes, though, because mm-hmm. she did a great job of making it much more lively and a, bit, a lot more personality to this, the kind of feeling of the workplace that they have there. Mm-hmm. And otherwise, it's just her working with some random other person. And yeah. it very, those, the, all the scenes where... Yeah, um, I mean, if she's not speaking, Eliza's, that could be boring. Yeah, Eliza's yeah. at the laboratory. It's just going to be her going around cleaning silently. So yeah. definitely essential. But uh, yeah, as you said, I don't know if it's Oscar... Uh, yeah. yeah, I should watch show win too. So. That would be. Yeah. <laughs> that would be. I don't know who the other contenders are, but that would still be yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, if she won, that would definitely create some waves in the Geek First podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess we haven't really oh, talked oh, about the main character too much. Mm-hmm. I think they do a good. She has an arc, but I think it's it happens so quick that it's not bad. It's just you kind of understand where it's gonna go, and that's where my thing with mm-hmm. it being predictable. You know she's lonely, you know, even though she has these friends, she still feels lonely, she feels like an outcast, and the speech where she does the sign language and Richard Jenkins, like, explains what she's saying is the best example of her character growth of I want, like, when this creature looks at me, he just yeah. sees me, right? And other people, they maybe have their expectations lowered, or they feel they gotta take care of her, everything like that, and that's where I don't think you... Uh, this is not a con but I feel like her arc happens really quickly and then for the most of the movie it's about fall, continuing to fall in love with the fish man yeah. and protecting him right like it, it goes really quick and you know she literally changes at the end but I think she mm-hmm. her change happened and I think that worked for this story because I don't think she need to continue to yeah. have a big arc she accepted she loved this thing and she accepted it right yeah so, I was yeah. happy with the pacing I didn't expect for uh because I, I knew at some point they were gonna, she was going to break this guy out. Yeah. This guy, this fish creature thing, Majig, out of the laboratory. But I didn't expect for it to happen as soon as it did. I mean, I guess oh, yeah. it's still like halfway or like an hour or something into the movie. Yeah. But I'm glad that uh, they decided to get that, I, I'm going to say out of the way, but that sounds negative. But not, I don't mean it negatively. Mm-hmm. But do that early on and then, I don't know, get to some stuff that I feel like I didn't really expect. I didn't really know what they were going to do. I still, I don't really understand, or I guess I don't agree that... She like l- kept him in her apartment. I feel like that was maybe not the best place. No, and to like keep him. the sex scene is great visually, but it doesn't make much sense when the water is slowing down in the theater. That's when these like, that's when it's a Guillermo <laughs> del Toro <laughs> thing. I feel that lots of times in his movies he like really breaks what you would consider realistic, and it is people go oh a fish man ball, but it's like in this world they're trying to hide this guy, mm-hmm. but then they're just she's just deliberately like flooding this apartment that is connected to a theater. If it's yes. just another apartment, okay, fine, maybe they find a way, but a whole entire theater, it's like, well, I feel like someone's going to be asking some questions, or even then, you're trying to hide them, and then someone, Michael Shannon, looking through newspapers, oh, yeah. the theater is flooded, and it's like, ah, oh, like, you're really putting this guy in some risk now, you know? Like, yeah. you're really throwing him into uh, deep waters. <laughs> I think, I think Jesus. one thing for that, though, is that was her last full day with him, uh, going by her letting him go on the t- October the 10th as for her calendar mm-hmm. um, that was kind of her way of saying like I don't really care what happens after uh, you're gone yeah. pretty much I just want to like have this moment with you and then you're gone sure. forever later. so that's later. kind of what I saw is her kind of <laughs> I don't even get to saying goodbye to the her life as it has been up until now and kind yeah. of taking a new path yeah. and just kind of going with whatever comes after now you guys have seen it more not more, but more recently mm-hmm. October 10th was it just she decided that or was it because it was ha- supposed to rain that I day. think well the rain was like September 30th to October 30th 
Okay. Um, I don't think there's any specific. You remember, water. You remember these? Dates? It was something like that, or it was like September till November was when they had like the where it showed on the sign of the canal when the water's gonna be high. Okay. And it didn't actually say anything specifically about the tenth. I don't okay. think, but that was my assumption is the weather forecast was this is the week it's going to rain. Okay. Because I thought they re- I didn't the I didn't anything. think they had that day plan. I thought they just started rushing it out because it's starting to die. So that I didn't remember. Mm. No, yeah, she definitely had picked the day, but and I think... just started to die, like, that same day? I well, guess, well, it was the day, I don't know, the day before. It was cl- pretty close to that I'm day. pretty sure they actually left, like, the, not the evening before the day they were going. So they, they, I think they, they, uh, ditched on, like, the 9th. Right. Mm. I guess. Because of the urgency. Yeah. 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 I, I actually, I, I mentioned this, uh, as well, Briggs after, I, I'm not really a fan of how they... Uh, how Richard kind of tracked them to the docks because she had just written it on that like calendar thing. She had yeah. wrote like rain slash docks because it was something she didn't do throughout the rest of the movie. She doesn't need to write that down. You can keep it up there. Yeah, I feel like I feel like there's just uh, a more creative uh, way, even something they could have done like visually to uh, for him to figure that out and make. Maybe make him feel a bit smarter. It felt like they tried, and then, like, we can't figure out. Let's Let's do... just write rain, <laughs> slash, docs, yeah. and yeah. red, and all this kind of... The, the, the good ideas weren't really flooding in. No. No. Um, <laughs> that scene, I like, but I feel... The scene at the docks? At the docks. Of? I like the scene overall. I feel it's a little anticlimactic. I don't know why. Like, I feel like it's really quick. I don't know. He gets shot, and then she gets shot, and then... When Fishman just stands up and then slices Michael Shannon, he's like, you are a god, and then he dies, and they get away, and the cops, yeah. like, for me, it felt really quick, even though the sequence itself was long, of, like, leaving the whole, mm-hmm. the apartment, getting there, I felt that was just kind of, it kind of feels like that's where you see that, and then on the DVD, you're like, oh, but then there was two minutes cut. I don't, I'm not saying that's what it is, but it feels like in an action movie, that's, there's something that was there, or something that wasn't, if it wasn't, then to, to me, it just didn't flow the greatest itself, it was great, like, <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. I'm just throwing them out. Yeah, I'm throwing them out like life rafts. Um, so then, then they get into the water, and they're like, you get the imagery, and she turns into a fish lady. I think that ended up well, but I, I maybe they just didn't have the budget to do something bigger. Maybe they didn't yeah. want to. I don't know. But for me, the ending is just kind of like, okay, we got there. Yeah. That's good enough. It's good enough. Of but it didn't blow me away. Scenes for sure. And yeah. I, I didn't like the line at all of Michael Shannon. You are like, God. That that one was like, uh, <laughs> you're dying, man. That's you don't care. No, just it's kind of cheesy. Yeah, because I don't, I think it, it was just a throwaway line, that thing of the scientist being like, oh, he could be a god, and Michael Shannon's like, no, he's not, and then that was like the very beginning of the film, like, if the whole film centered about, like, them really studying, like, oh, could this be some sort of god-like form, but really it was just Well, like, I think because they tried to stress that a few times that uh, that character kind of has, like, a god complex in, yeah. in some capacity, and he obviously doesn't really give a shit about other people, like, no. there's a... <coughs> <coughs> I'm dying here. There's a one scene. I think he's choking on water. Seaweed. H two O. Yeah, there's that one uh, scene when I can't remember if it's the scientist or his other assistant, but he like walks into his office and he's like, "No, you have to go out and then like knock on the door and then I'll let you in and then we can talk." I'm gonna yeah. do that. Yeah, <laughs> like, I just it, it I obviously it seemed like they were trying to establish that he uh, he was obviously really full of himself. He's oh, yeah. an egomaniac for sure. So I, I think that was. Uh, more where they're going for with the god, the line at the end. Yeah, he mm-hmm. might have even said something, but he was felt like god at that point earlier. In the movie. I wouldn't know that. I wouldn't say so much that he felt like he himself was a god, but he. Well, not in the literal very, sense, but in like the. I was very. He, um, I I took it more as he was just very strict on how he followed. His rules, name is Richard Strickland, so. and obviously that I would say he in like it all stems from him being very religious, and then. Um, with him saying the creature was an affront to God, mm. it was like a monster and it shouldn't be allowed to exist because that, uh, for whatever reason, that's the way he interprets. Uh, I'm assuming the Bible, and then the Bible. Yeah, so he he followed those rules on uh, his religious rules that he sets for himself very strictly, and then that obviously carries over into his work life, right. having to follow rules to a T, and then. Obviously, it gets to an almost fanatical point for him where it's just like destroying everything he definitely else around him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so I'd say that's kind of more of the issues with him. But mm-hmm. I, I really like how they did his character overall, though, having that yes. kind of drive. And you can see that he's trying to be the best man he can be from what he thinks is the right. 
because mm-hmm. he's still like thinking pos- he has that positive thought sort of thing and he has like this way of doing things and he wants people to look at him in a positive manner he wants to buy a nice car and mm-hmm. yeah. all that kind of stuff so it's uh, a very believable villain and I think I think it was pretty great yeah I think I think when he breaks down like near the end of the movie too it mm-hmm. It, it felt justified as well and like breaks like, his like you mentioned, off. yeah that oh, scene man. when he rips his own fingers off and just throws them on the carpet and one of them like balances like under the TV it's like they're gonna have to go get that like that's, I, oh, that's awful I love that they didn't like make it this figures land in some symbolic spot or something and they just like it just bounced around shape of a cross shape of a cross oh man well I at least at least all their <coughs> the fingers didn't go on the TV you know so yeah. you can look at it like a, a glass half full Mm-hmm. I knew you like <laughs> when you, when you started Jesus. speaking there that it was leading to some yeah. pun, and so I'll actually say that that's a bit disappointing about with the pun that you landed on. Oh, they're getting worse and worse as they go along. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not really thinking this out. Um, what else do we want to hit upon in this, well, this film? What did you guys think well, of the? I, I just oh. wanted to say since we're on the uh, Fuck you. the topic <laughs> of Richard Strickland, Michael Shan's character. Michael one thing Shan. I noticed kind of near the end, which was maybe pretty obvious, but I, just, I think it was, I thought it was really cool is how. Throughout the film, he's always like, oh, what, like, a man washes his hands before or after doing his business, Mm -hmm. and it could say a lot, and throughout the whole film, he's always washing his hands, kind of, before he does something, and then when he's kind of freaking out and looking in the mirror in the lab, and that he has to get the uh, famous man out, he takes his pills, and then he washes his hands after he takes them, and I thought that was kind of, like, a really, a good way of showing just how much his character is breaking down. And I was like looking in the mirror and be like, think positive thoughts. Like, mm. you're confident. You can yeah. get <laughs> Yeah, that was, was just, the, the, He had so many good character moments that yeah. I think Michael Shannon just delivered on perfectly. And I think delivery was mm-hmm. strong. And there was one scene where he um, was freaking out. Or it was when um, Eliza was uh, like simply fuck you to him. Mm-hmm. And then he was freaking out because they didn't know what's going on. He's getting pissed. And he, like, he like, like stands up, he like kicks a chair over or something. Oh, great stuff. Great stuff. Wonderful. Yeah. Just oh. kicking chairs like a Fantastic legend. actor. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did you guys uh, think of the scientist character? Because he's in this movie quite a bit more uh, than, once again, I was expecting. Why Especially well, after, like, the first half an hour, I kind of thought he'd be, you know, he'd be able to drop a few facts every mm-hmm. once in a while. You know, this is how you keep the guy alive. He'd bring some reality to it. But mm-hmm. really, he actually ended up having, like, a story arc. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, a pretty brutal death scene near the end, too. I yeah. think, um, I, I liked his character. I think it brought a lot of depth to the world itself. And uh, his character, I would say for sure, is kind of how depth it to developed. The, what do you mean by depth to the world? Like, it kind of makes the world they're yeah. in uh, more complex and more believable rather than just being a set piece. It kind of adds another layer to everything that's going on, whereas hmm. his whole issue with the Russians and whatnot doesn't necessarily affect Eliza's story yeah. or any of the other characters really in much of a manner. Sure, there's a couple little influences because it influences how he acts mm-hmm. towards them. But overall, it's not a huge impact on the story, but it builds the world yeah. more. It makes it more believable and adds just another layer to the story. And one thing also that uh, when we were talking about Eliza's arc being really short, mm-hmm. uh, one thing that I think is cool is that because it was so short, it allowed them to have that second half of the film for developing him. He got a lot more screen time once the creature was kind of as they're building up to like right, right. before the breakout and then mm-hmm. after the breakout. And I'd say that's when um, the neighbor actor uh, he got a lot of his development after and like right during the breakout. So mm-hmm. it was kind of good that they because uh, there's really only so much development they can do with Eliza's character, I think. Yeah, exactly. so yeah. it was really good that they kind of did that quickly and then allowed the other characters to develop throughout the rest of the film. Yeah, I'm a big Michael Stoll- Stolberg fan. I was a big fan of him. Same way I found out Shadow's Boardwalk Empire. It's a great AP- HBO show. He's had a killer year this year. He's actually had the best scene in Call Me By Your Name. And then, you know, in that movie. Um, this movie, then there's one other movie. I can't remember what he's in, but he's kind of been an MVP this year. He's doing these great, like, subtle performances. I like it. I think, like what Briggs was saying, it doesn't affect the main story, but how the creature got here makes more sense when it's all this talk about competing with Russia and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a real thing. You think about, like, the race to the moon and everything. Like, there's all these touchstones in history of, like, 
countries did this because they wanted to beat other countries, right? So I think this kind of works like, hey, we want to keep this creature. Yeah, we want to examine it, but really we just want it because other countries don't have it or adversaries don't. And I think he did good as far as I really like his death scene and I really like the build up to that. I like that he was Russian or at least maybe, you know, you could just... Russian-ish. Like, yeah, Russian-ish. Yeah. Whatever it was. Like, because I would have expected... That was maybe one thing unpredictable. I thought, oh, for sure, that's not going to be a thing. I think that's just yeah. in the background. But for that moment, it was in the forefront. Um, I think it was it was good to see how much he cared for the creature because when it got attacked or when it was hurt, he's trying to care for its wounds. He sees Eliza in the back and doesn't say anything. So once again, he's like a vital part of helping him get out. And I think they made his his motives earned where it could have just been like oh yeah i'm just gonna help you but they showed multiple things before the breakout to show you okay it makes sense why this guy would do it not just because the plot needs him to yeah. right so right yeah because i guess like they, water docks water docks <laughs> yeah like they, there's a there's a couple scenes uh where he noticed or sees eliza in the lab as well and he doesn't say anything and eventually obviously he catches on to that she wants to save this creature's life as well yeah yeah so that i i agree i agree with you guys um, and w one thing I was curious about, uh, particularly for you, Travis, there's a lot of, like, TV and, like, movies throughout this movie. Obviously, she lives above a movie theater. Yeah. And there's, like, a lot of scenarios where characters are just watching TV shows. And they're in a big movie scene at the, near the end of the film when they have the little dream sequence. Right. Very, very hard. Yeah. So what do you, what did you, why, why, why was that the case? Why was that in there? I so think much? that's just a Guillermo del Toro thing. I think he's just Is such that, a fan of film and he wanted to put that in there. This film is inspired by many other films and I don't think he takes that as like a insult and I think that's like same as Tarantino, lots of his stuff pulls from other movies. That's why I still defend J.J. as well. J.J. Abrams does that as well. Like He takes a lot of things from other movies. I think it's them just tributing other movies but I think it's just, just a touch of his and just maybe that's what he wanted to because I feel like in a very different sense but I feel like Eliza is maybe what Guillermo del Toro felt about himself at some point in his life that he yep. was different he was strange people wouldn't talk to him he's talked about his whole life having a fascination with monsters he's done many multiple m monster movies Hellboy Pan's Labyrinth being maybe his greatest film of all time which should have been nominated and won an Oscar and then movies so I feel like there's like little parts of him in this thing of like she's kind of him love of movies love of monsters so kind of makes sense in some sort of way and then maybe he had a neighbor who liked art <laughs> who knows <laughs> yeah that one I can't I'm tell you a neighbor who liked art and he was once a cleaning lady and all these things yeah, yeah I can't I can't, I can't tell you that one he escaped to the sea many years ago yeah yeah yeah. Well, and he loved water puns as well. Mm -hmm. Loves water puns. Yeah, yeah. I I think it was I think it was uh, interesting. It, it I obviously as well, uh, kind of uh, is responsible for the setting and like time period. I mean, there's not really like a set because obviously it's kind of like a sci sci fi. It's not like our reality, but yeah. I, it really sets like the kind of music and TV they're watching. Kind of gives you. Uh, I guess, an image of, of where we are. Yeah, and you get an idea of, like I said, if today they're like, well, maybe maybe not right now if you're talking about the Russians, but maybe five years ago, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, yeah, the Russians. Like, well, why are they feuding with the Russians? But when you get put in that time frame, that kind of, the good thing about if it's done right in movies, when movies take place in the past, you already have an idea of what that world is like. Even though, like yeah, you said, yeah. it's clearly not our world because this very fantastical stuff is going on, but you have an idea of, okay, this is the setting where, that's yeah. why some, I think, sci-fi movies, like something like Valerian or something like that, it's hard to do because, say, so, okay, it's a thousand years in the future. It's like, well, we don't know that world. What's the yeah, context yeah. of that world? How do people act? Yeah. It's like, we know how people act in the 60s. We know how the world act in the 80s, and we'll know how they acted in 2018. Mm -hmm. you know? so, I, I think the opening segment does a really good job of showing that as well, just in general. It really, I think the first, like, 10 minutes do a really good job of, saying okay here's where the movie takes place and then you know shooting you off from there and obviously it also gives a really good intro to your main character yeah oh yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. where else what, what next Car there were some characters doing you said you weren't a fan of I don't want to get those because I yeah. thought it was going to be the scientist but <coughs> yeah I, was it just the art dealer was no <laughs> I, I think I, I I actually I don't know I feel I like the scientist enough but maybe I felt like there could have been maybe something like more there mm -hmm. I guess, I, I guess it's not really a complaint. Um, you know, in hindsight, I don't think there really is any characters I'm like super disappointed with. Wow, so the non-spoiler viewers are going out there like, I wonder which character Del must didn't like in this well-written movie, then come back. Oh, no, there's no character. I mean, I look at it as like a, you know, a two-hour standalone movie, and I think you haven't heard about the sequel. No, wow. Shoot water too. The wrong. Go hard, go water. 
Go hard, go water. Yeah. That's well, seriously. Yeah. That's, that's what it's called. Week. Oh no! I'm completely out of it. I've been trying to think of other. Comes out next theory. month. Uh, but <laughs> on Netflix. Yeah, I mean, they they give a lot of time to the protagonist and the villain as well, and then I think they did a good job of developing other characters. I, I, I don't know. Maybe the scientist. Maybe I don't like his storyline so much, or like the other, like those scenes with the Russian mob boss. I feel like those are the only scenes that I was a little taken out. Uh, but the rest yeah. of the movie, I, I felt like I was pretty involved, or I was at least curious of what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously there are some characters in this movie that were supposed to be like piece of shit characters, and I think those are all done. Obviously the villain, and then this Bruce character. I, I thought it was interesting that they actually had like an actor for that character because throughout this movie, until like the last ten minutes, he's just this name. He's just this character that uh, his wife is. His oh, yeah, wife Zelda is constantly yeah, yeah. complaining about and just. Talking about how he's lazy and how he's mean, how he's all around just a piece of shit. But then you actually yeah. get to see him, and he is kind of a piece of shit because he doesn't stand up for his wife, and he obviously doesn't even like answer the door. He's just my back hurts, and <laughs> not a, not a good dude. Great Bruce no. and, uh, Thank you. Right there. Yeah. Very well done. Top tier. Yeah. Top tier. And then uh, I guess the only thing I would show is I got show the great Doug Jones. He's been doing this for a while. He plays Fishman, and like he they do right. such a good job of. Dr. Jones has always done this, but just his movements, the little cadences that he will have, whether it's moving, whether it's the sounds, and all, a lot of this is to help with effects and whatnot, but he does a lot of that body work, and it's just the way that he body moves work. makes, yeah, just like just like Tom Hardy and his eye work, you know, and somebody has some water work somewhere out there, maybe Kevin Costner, some people get that joke, um, but uh, I think he does a good job. You feel like it is, it's very much like any circus with Gollum. You feel like it's a real thing, you know, because lots of times that can happen in especially big budget movies where, yeah, it's CG. To me, Beauty and the Beast. Well, never felt like the, 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 the never this, felt like the this Beast. This character is like mostly practical effects, right? Yeah, but those eyes are clearly CGI, I would imagine. Yeah, they like, stop moving, but like for the most part. I was surprised at how much yeah, it was practical. I, I, I bet there's more CGI than they let on, just the way he looks and the way they move I guess sometimes. they're just getting better at it. I just have an idea that's more like <coughs> similar to Circus in a way of like, yeah, he may have some makeup on, but there's a lot of dots and balls covering that dots body. Dots and balls covering yeah, that body. Yeah. Dots and balls of podcast coming like dots and balls. <laughs> to your favorite uh, uh, boating lodge. Mm hmm. One thing I want to um, ask you guys about is, I talked to you a little bit uh, after we watched the film, Dylan, but um, was how they kind of displayed the ending mm -hmm. and how um, it was narrated. So the ending that we got is the neighbor's sort of version of what he thinks happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it also, because it's narrated, it leaves it kind of open to us to kind of interpret how, what actually happened once I jumped in the water, whether she just died and mm -hmm. whatnot. So... I thought that was really cool because it kind of, it has this sort of canon ending, I guess, but it leaves it open where it's like, hey, any, like, whatever they you want to happen in this, you, you can put in there. Yeah. Uh, without just having it set in stone. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a really cool compromise they did. Normally I'm not a fan of them kind of like taking the middle ground. I want them like, just like, if you have an idea, stick with it. But mm -hmm. in this case, I really like how they kind of started it ended with the narration and of uh, the neighbor I, I just thought that was really well done. So yeah, yeah. Any, I any particular thoughts? I didn't get the same thing with you. I got the same thing of that 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 was gonna like he's saying they're happy and then they're happy, but at the same point, I don't know how he knows that because does she ever come back up as fish lady? You know, yeah. so and there's no way. It to seems know. kind of the way he just morphs. Like I understand the healing, morphs. but he just like morphs her neck into gills. I know it's like she was done very this fantastical. Beginning. So. Yeah, true, 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 like true. very it's unpredictable. Very, like those scars would turn into girls very, one day. Oh, wow. I have no idea Ooh, that was no. coming. <laughs> so that was funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like how they they me. made that ending more open to. It's kind of like the Big Lebowski. That, that was the same actually. thing where there's a narrator at the start and end, and at well, actually, at one point the narrator is a character briefly, but um, that's more because that movie's like, you know, more of a comedy. But I think it's an interesting idea because it. It kind of, I don't know, it's one thing to kind of just get you into the story or introduce it as, like, this is a movie, but then throughout the movie, you kind of forget that there was a narrator, and that you don't think about it as, like, told from uh, the essence of a narrator, nor does it really make sense, because Eliza and all these scenes in the lab, like, how would he know about these things? Obviously, she told him about some of it, but obviously... Facebook. Facebook, yeah, exactly, Facebook. Um, 
I was thinking fish book, some sort of some sort that's of. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's the best I could do on face the spot. Bobble? Better than some face bobble. Face bobble. Face bobble. Did you say face bobble? I did. I screwed up some. They call it fish bowl. Hashtag fish bobble. Oh, fish bowl. That's pretty good. Fish bowl. <laughs> yep. uh, welcome to the fish bowl. I don't know where I was going. Where was I going? Uh, yeah, obviously these things are not really the way the story is told isn't through a narrator, but it's just at the beginning and I it's agree very with you. I like that the ending is yeah yeah it's like a fairy tale and. The ending is kind of open for interpretation to some capacity. Mm-hmm. At least that's how, how I see it. Go so, for that sequel. <laughs> you know, in my in my world, she just died. She couldn't swim underwater. Yeah, yeah. and I, she died. My world, and, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the Aquaman wasn't actually a character. It was just in her head the entire time. So she when she died, her. the fish is gone. There is no movie solved. The whole movie was her committing crimes at the lab, trying to escape, and then she gets shot and rolls into the water. <laughs> the whole movie was just um, <laughs> <Adam>. <laughs> what a plot. I'm sure a lot of people, if that was your opening statement of like, this is what this movie is. The whole movie is just um, in Saw Adam's dream while he's floating in the bathtub. You know, yeah, he's to kill that movie. Not what you want. Great, <laughs> a great movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look out for that foot. Look out um, for that foot. Yeah, I have nothing else to say as far as any anything. Positive or negative about mm-hmm. the movie? Uh, this movie uses a lot of greens Green. and blues, oh, yeah. Yeah. but more and more like teal, I would say, you know? Lots of eggs. I really like Lots how the, the main villain hates color green as well, mm-hmm. despite the amount of green in the lab. Mm-hmm. And then he gets, a car, that's a he gets a car that originally... Yeah, I, I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, green. And then that like fruitcake mm-hmm. thing, whatever it is, is like green as well with the guy's painting. And then he loves key lime pie. Just a lot of green, yeah, which is yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. I think it works. Green's a great yeah. color. It's up yeah. there with well pink. Done. Geek first green. Mm-hmm. I, also, years new I want to give a shout out to that one scene of Eliza where she is trying to convince her roommate uh, to help her. Mm-hmm. And the first, and this is when the one where she's like hating him and stuff. Uh, yeah, and then like I thought, and he just finished painting the green jello. As we were talking about, the but green jello. yeah, he just finished the one, and he's going off to show his presentation because he thinks it's his big break. Yeah. I don't know, he's going to do his thing. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, I just like the one part, like, the whole build was great, and then at the very end, when she just, like, slams the wall, I thought that was just amazingly <laughs> done, uh, both by Eliza and just, like, the way it was shot was phenomenal, and then her message of, like, if we don't help them, like, neither, we're not human either. Mm-hmm. I thought that was, like, we're probably, <laughs> probably one of the, one of my favorite scenes. Key scenes. Um, aside from, like, the visually stunning scene. Yeah. Or any scene Michael Shannon was in. Yeah. So I, I thought that was really what I liked that a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's all that's the last for me. Yeah, no. I give this a nice solid eight out of ten for my rating. I still mess up what I'll say. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It was great. Like I said I think a little predictable, the little things here and there. Um I really enjoyed the movie. I think I will watch it again at some point. It's one of the ones I like more, but it's nothing that uh blew me away, but it can still be a great movie and blow you away, you know? Mm-hmm. Blew you away like the ocean? Like a yeah. huge tidal wave. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to give this one a very uh, a viscous eight. Viscous. Uh, low viscosity. I was eight. thinking of that word uh, earlier when you said malleable. For uh, some reason, malleable and viscous are like one of the same. Yeah, they kind of make sense. I mean, I'm you still trying to figure out how to talk to girls. So I, <laughs> I, ne- I never figured that out. <laughs> if, you yeah. just, if you just bang on the wall like Eliza, mm-hmm. it seems like there's tension. Pretend I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you gotta learn something. They go to keepers and they sell you the podcast. They're like, you don't look like a fish. I'm not into you. I'm like, oh. No. I have a fin. You gotta Just stay in the water. And eat eggs. You know, get the You know, get He didn't even have a fin. Him. He has like a spine. He had a yeah, spine. I have a yeah. spine. Webbing between his fingers. Yeah, I'm working on getting a spine. You know, he can heal things. I have reverse scoliosis. Wow. I don't know what that means. Hetero <laughs> Patreon and get Dylan like here. Sorry, it was a Mally. What'd you give it? A viscous? Uh, a viscous eight. And as you said, Travis, it is a, it is a beautiful and stunning film. But so when you say viscous eight, that to me says that it's an eight right now, but it will just kind of droop down and keep continuously going down until it's a zero and it's all spread. I, I, I more think it could like slide in either direction. Because it could be, a, I was gonna say, who says Michael it's on Jackson a slow was very viscous. He could really slide. Up. I was gonna say, <laughs> who, who says it's on a slow? He would have fucking loved downwards. this movie, by the way, Michael <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> There's always been a slope that goes upwards. Uh, Anyways, geez. it's a viscous. Thing. I think it's a, a very beautiful film. But again, like it's not for me. It's not the kind of film, and the 
It was great, but I don't think the delivery was where I expected it. But I went in with incredibly high expectations for this mm. one. So people are so ignorant trying to mm-hmm. get that fish in. So it was a great film, but I mean, it, it's, it's no nine or ten. For it was me. no nine or ten. No, it was merely a viscous eight. Oh, <laughs> Just no. a viscous eight. Yeah. As for myself, I mean, I don't give things numbers anymore. No. But uh, yeah, I I enjoyed this movie. I think it. I think it is deserving of all these nominations. It's getting at the Oscars for sure. Just drowning in nominations. It's just drowning <laughs> in viscous nominations. You keep pronouncing that word different. What? Viscous. viscous. You said viscous. I feel like viscous. I always say viscous. viscous. For viscous. Like vis- vis- Maybe I said vicious, and you thought you, I. You almost said vicious, but it was actually viscous. It's a combo. It's a combo word. It's like that's not a word. It's like something that it can't is just combo viscous, words. but it's also vicious. You can combo words. I like comboing words. Okay, I, don't know, I can argue this. But yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie. I could see myself watching it again at some point. I feel like uh, artistic-wise, cinematography, there's something uh, there on a rewatch. I'm sure you would notice. Pick up little details or maybe learn more of the character just by seeing, you know, what's going on in the world. And I think, uh, yeah, the sets had a lot of had a lot of love put into them. You know, the lab and <laughs> what. I, I don't want to say I, don't I, I actually want to know what you have to say. For some reason, the sets are not love with. They literally made love on the Somebody fucking the snow fucking the sets. I don't know why. I just thought it was a How is that even... That doesn't even make sense. You know what? I, my, I thought it was a good pun because they had they literally had sex and made love in the set. Uh, well, so, I, yeah. I mean, they didn't, though. It's it's off screen. You're supposed to but it's assume still, that they Yeah, did. so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Geek first podcast. I like, I like this Thank movie. Thank you to all of new subscribers, by the way. This is what you're yes. here for. Yes. You're here Delayed for. Delayed reviews of <laughs> Round by a Water. Water puns. <laughs> Water puns. 2018. <Yes. laughs> Immature people, you know. You know, we're reviewing 2017 movies in 2018. That's what you're here for. Yeah. That's what we do. We're really in over our head on that one. <laughs> oh. Nice. Where can they find... <laughs> While they're hanging out on the beach looking for their own fish man or fish woman, anyone want to take the Taylor roll? Where can they find well, us? Well, they're not going to find us there. They're going to find us the, at the swimming pool. The inter... <laughs> the interwaves. <laughs> the interwaves. On the fish bowl. Well, you can find us on... Uh, both Facebook and Twitter, which you'll notice if you look at their logos, that there's a lot of blue. It's kind of like their water. So if you are to... Oh, take I think that our logo, I'm like, there's no blue on this GV. No, there's no blue. Maybe one day there will be. <laughs> but look at that combo, Facebook you and know, GV together, and you got, you know, Fishman. Mm-hmm. Fishman galore. You go you to know? Geekverse, you won't find uh, Richard Strickland there, though. Lots of green. No. Mm-hmm. He hates green. But mm-hmm. maybe you'll... Maybe you'll see him in our uh, MCU fantasy draft, which you can get over on Patreon. Maybe you will. That's a big story. Right now, wow. for a dollar. I said maybe. Don't, though? Yeah, what if you don't? What if you see Sally Hawkins? They're right? going to be really disappointed if they go watch that cast and they don't What if you name? see the art dealer's boss guy? Like, whoever there was. Great the choices. Art dealer's I boss. I don't know what the fuck he was. You know, anyway. What if you see Bruce, you know? Hop, yeah, Bruce Cruz. That's the one. Yeah, hop in your rowboat. Cruise over to Facebook. Uh, dot com. Type in Geek First Podcast. You'll find us. Twitter, you can find us at Geek First Cast. You know what I love? I love SoundCloud, and so should you. Not pod. <laughs> we got another negative review on podcast. On just pod a, bay? just our pod bay, yeah. Just podcast, another podcast, just in general. <laughs> yeah, the, the main God podcast. God looks down. This podcast sucks. <laughs> we have this one. So like, it's just another in quotations nerd culture podcast. Nice. It feels like they sit down. They don't even yeah. think about what they're gonna do. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes we don't. Okay, yeah. but that's what makes it real. But you know what? We plan it out as far as everything. We put a lot of hard work in. But yeah, we the the pitch for this podcast is it's like you're seeing us outside theater talk about this yeah. movie. That's kind of the idea. So it's like, hey, this show is about friends. Well, fuck, they're making a show about people being friends. This show sucks. Like, come on yeah. now. And you know what? It whoa, this chair is maybe just. Just stand up for the rest of the cast. Yeah, I maybe, maybe, maybe I should. Maybe wow, I should. Wow, Travis. Maybe maybe you should throw this chair out in the maybe river. Maybe all that water you drank earlier was oh, really... Oh, uh, snap. You really wailing you. Oh. And I mentioned Patreon. <laughs> Instead of throwing those dollars, those quarters into a well and wishing for something, your wish can come true if you throw them to us. For a dollar, you get a bunch of content. For five dollars, you get everything. We got an entire season. Your wish can come true. Because, well, you know, if you go on there, you can ask us a question and we'll discuss mm-hmm. it live That's, on You cast. can ask us... Mm-hmm. About 
more water puns. But you can... You can ask us for our favorite flavors you of You can get water. entire season of Spider-Man retrospective. Or least favorite flavors. The Marvel retrospective. Geek vs. Ball oh, is Marvel. back. You get those early. If you get those, please don't spoil them because there's some big stuff. But you can... you 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 Do you not want to wait a week to see... Not a week, but who would? Do you want to not even wait a day to see the champion v. champion match? Go pay it all. You can get right now lots of great $1, stuff. $1, that's it? Yeah, Whoa. that's it. There's $5 for a title match right now as well. That's that's good content. It's a great well, I title paid match. I paid $5 to watch a title match. Yeah, and we can't tell you what it is, but Think it's about great. that overpriced coffee you're going to get Starbucks. Don't buy that coffee. Mm-hmm. If we'll you want, take it. If you want to check out our 24-hour stream we did in November, uh, 19 hours of it is up. It's good. You can see the entire tournament. You can see how... We did do 24 <laughs> hours, I promise. <laughs> I saw it on OBS. We, we lost them in the sea. We lost I was the, there. You <laughs> can see Tyler <laughs> become champion. You can see Dylan and Kirkland get their head-shaped ball. Lots of good stuff. We'll be back next Monday to talk about some Super Bowl goodness trailers. And then soon Black Panther is coming up. And Panther's man, coming up. That's exciting. Less than three wow. weeks away. We have lots of good content coming out. So please stay tuned. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Yes, thank you, you broke a record already for our biggest month by 6,000. You guys are a bunch of fucking crazy Turn nuts. Turn our puddle into a pond. Oh, yeah. One day in ocean. Right now, we're a big fish in a small pond. First, but we're going to jump over that bigger pond. Boom. And it won't be boring. The bigger pond, you couldn't have said lake or like river or delta. My brain. <laughs> Later, nerds. <laughs>